Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video Truna, and welcome back to the Outer Worlds, where last time, I would say we did a pretty good job keeping some terrifying, terrible secrets out of the hands of the corporations that would have misused them over on Roseway. And on top of that, we picked up a really awesome space gun that makes bullets, like, fly all over the place and go everywhere, and that's just flipping marvellous right there. And today we want to go and visit Monarch, but, um, I have realised one small... Very small mistake I've made, which was pointed out to me in the comments. Yeah, so, um, I was very excited about getting Sam set up, my new robot friend, with an acid sprayer and diddly diddly d. Aside from one very, very small issue that I overlooked during that process, which is... I'm actually terrified of robots! And as you can see up in the top left there... It counts for friendly robots too, which is something I got a bit on the wrong side. You see, the description reads, Robots give you the willies and when they're attacking your party, you're not as effective as you should be. So I was working under the assumption it was only hostile robots because the perk specifically says when they're attacking your party. But it's not just when they're attacking your party. Totally friendly robots do the job as well. So, uh, sadly... Ever so sadly, that means we can't really be travelling around with Sam for the most part. Because losing dexterity and losing perception is unfortunate, but not the end of the world. But, yeah, he knocks my temperament down to below average, which means I would have no passive health regeneration whatsoever. And that's... that's pretty darn bad. So tragically, Sam, we will take you out for a spin at some point, but... We can't be going around with you on the regular, but that's fine, because me and Team Felix and Parvati are now colour coordinated, so we're going to do just fine. Speaking of which, I should actually check around with the team, see if anyone's got any new quests for me, updates, diddly diddly day. Hey, Captain. I got a thing I want to ask you. It's kind of big. Here we go. Parvati wants to chat to me, presumably about her dating life again, so uh, go on, Parvati. Tell me what's up. I was thinking about what you said before, after we went to the Lost Hope on the Groundbreaker. I reckon you're right. I think I'm ready to stop fretting and fussing and and ask Junle to go steady straight out. And I'm thinking of doing it here, on the ship. All right, well done, Parvati. That was very brave indeed. So, uh, do you need me to actually, you know, help in any capacity? I was kind of hoping you'd offer. The thing is, I can't ask her over like, like this. I mean, look at me. I'm all covered in engine grease and I ain't showered in nigh on a week. I smell like sweat most days and, well, don't look too close at my fingernails. I was thinking, hoping, we could stop by Groundbreaker for gas supplies. Okay, fair enough. We will go and buy some soap and whatnot. Though, to be clear, when you say you haven't showered for a week... There is actually a shower upstairs. You may not be satisfied with the range of soap, but it is there. You could have been showering. Like, everyone else has been showering, Parvati. Please shower. So I now have a mission to set up a perfect date for Parvati. Oh, 100% we're doing that, yes. Okay, Monarch, I'll be back for you in a second. Here we go. We got ourselves a quest marker here, so I'm guessing Parvati knows where she actually wants the supplies from. And I swear... Yeah, the shop did actually mention, uh, no, she doesn't want to go to Space's Choice, though I do swear Martin mentioned something about soap at some point, but, okay, she wants, oh, she wants black market soap. Okay, black market soap it is. Okay, we don't actually need to tell Gladys that we're trying to impress Chief Jun Lei, but yes, we are looking for some deep cleansing. Give me one bar of your finest soap, please. I think I got just the thing, my dear. A few years back. Auntie Cleo's put out a whole makeover kit, and I snagged a couple for myself. High-grade shampoo and conditioner, scrubby brush, a nice lotion, that sort of thing. I still got them, too. What's the scrubby brush for? Cleaning around your nails, sweetheart. Gets the engine grease out. Makes your hands soft. Most folk don't got the time, or bathtubs for such, me included. I'll let you have one on clearance. You want rosish, mock apple and cinnamon, or a refurbished ship? Ooh, interesting. So rosish when it comes to romance, can't go wrong with the classics. Mock apple and cinnamon, I'm guessing that's like apple and cinnamon. So that's nice, but maybe a bit much. Or 
refurbished ship. No, no, no. Not scrubbed parts, but... Actually, apple and cinnamon is a really nice scent. As long as it's not, like, too overpowering, that's pretty good. But we're going to ask Parvati, because she gets to express her opinion first. Oh, gosh. We never talked about what kind of smells she likes. I think pretty much every spot on Groundbreaker just smells like old socks. It comes down to what sort of intent you got. If I was looking to do a spy job over in engineering, I'd be safe with refurbished ship. Now, if I was a young thing trying to come on all precious-like, I'd probably go with Rosish. But if I was doing it for my own self, I'd pick mock apples and synthamon. I guess you could eeny miny mo it. Take your time, dear. A lady sense has a lot about her. Okay, so if she was just saying that Rose would be, yeah, a bit more on the innocent side, well, Parvati is very naive and wants to be very open in this whole thing, so go on, we'll go for the Rose. We didn't have anything Rose-ish in Edgewater. I heard it smells real pretty, though. I'll just wrap that up for you, since it's for a special occasion. I'll pay for that, ma'am. Thanks for being so helpful. You're welcome, dear. Alright, so I have not been horrendously ripped off. I was expecting to be ripped off, but there we go. Okay, Parvati, how are we feeling about this and what's next on your shopping list? Because I'm guessing it's not that easy. Groundbreaker's safe from melting to bits now. Lots of good people can rest easy because of you. Okay, that's lovely for you to say, but we were actually here to discuss your soap. Oh, thanks, Captain. I'm going to put these someplace safe. In her messages, June Lay said her mama used to make this dish for Monarch. Dustback casserole. Saltuna and Xenogold needle mushrooms. And then for dessert, there's a thing called, uh, sweetheart cake. It's made with almond paste and wax gourds. And there's gotta be some place in Stellar Bay that can bake a casserole. And I heard tell there's a Rizzo's town near there called Cascadia, what specializes in sweets. Aha! Uh -huh. So we've been to both of those places already, though... Yeah, we're getting into more dangerous, far-off places now, but go on, Parvati. For you, anything. Thanks, Captain. I know I'm asking an awful lot, but I'm sure it's going to be worth it. Okay, back to Monarch, and let's just quickly nip back to uh, Cascadia here, because, yeah, we've been there already. Let's see if we can figure out if there's a way to get inside that factory, or if I need to loop around the very long way around to the far side of the valley to do that. Okay, looks like we got lucky over here. Creatures have not respawned at all, but Sweetheart Cake over there. So, yeah, the factory's sort of divided in two, and it would appear we can't get in this way over here. We need to find a way to get over to the far side. Now, I don't know if this wall's just covered in invisible walls, because there are some invisible walls around this part of the world, so I'm not sure whether we're getting through. I say this... I've just noticed there is, in fact, a giant open front door right here in the factory. The factory where I was saying we need to find the pipes, we need to cross over, we need to diddly diddly dee. No, there's there's just a giant front door here. That's good. Right there. So, excuse me. Hi over there. Yes, you can all die at this point. Workbench and vending machine, but nothing else in this front room at least. Okay, let's figure out what's going on here, though. Hello. Got ourselves a... Ooh. Got ourselves a really well-locked door. Now, my engineering's being boosted up to 76 by Parvati. But another 14, that's going to be tricky. But maybe, just maybe, possible. Because I've got myself some lovely welder's goggles. Now, that's engineering, unfortunately. Tech skills, however, are... No, this isn't tech skills. We've established this. This is uh, stealth skills, isn't it? Yeah, stealth skills. So that, that's not gonna fly. Yeah, if there's a way to get underground down to the waste pipes or whatever, it's gonna be through this door, but can't get through there just yet. Simply cannot pull it off. Lockpick is not good enough. Okay, I've got one more stupid idea, which is uh, the highest point I can easily get to is the landing pad. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here and try and, yeah, do something stupid because uh, slow time really flipping messes up the physics of this game. It seems to make the physics go a bit on the banana side. And uh, I can actually move uh, faster inside uh, here than I can do normally. I get 25% bonus movement speed uh, 
inside vats. So, in theory, does that mean I can actually get a longer distance on my jumps? I don't know, but I'm gonna give it a go. Okay, sprinting, 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 and activate this, and jump, and that should clear the wall, and no, that's invisible wall right there. That is very much an invisible wall, so I'm not getting over that. Alright, so we need to find a way to cross this here ravine, and uh, best bet I've got is, okay, one, obviously, you know, using the dedicated bridges, or two... There's some form of little, yeah, a group of buildings right by the edge over here. And that one is uh, suspiciously close to the edge. So uh, let's just nip down there because we definitely didn't go that way. We definitely ran directly from here up to here, running in terror from various creatures pursuing me. So uh, let's just nip down south, see if this might be something useful. All right, a couple of creatures have definitely respawned in the meantime. And it's, yeah, there's some big ones, but Manta Queen isn't anything too bad. Uh, Soldier's not too bad either. They're both stunned uh, for the time being. There's just a Manta Pillar coming at me. And no, you don't. No, you flipping don't. And just get a bit up close. Everybody use your abilities if you can, please. Thank you. Here we go. Little path over in this direction. Just going down towards the edge over here. Not seeing much in the way of trouble yet, but there should be something around here. Here we go. Handful of buildings and uh, got ourselves uh, robots. Only the one that I can see here. So, Parvati, if you'd just like to get a sneak attack critical on that thing, knock it the flip down. Now we can just put some nice bullets in it before it gets up again. That'd be Marvellous, actually. And dead before it wakes up. What else have we got here? Aha! We've actually got ourselves uh, Marauders on this occasion. Well, that... That works fine for me. A couple of quick headshots. Murder all of them. And no, 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 no. Please drop kick that guy before he starts being a dick. And there we go. Ring lead up. Ring lead up. Ring lead up. Dead. And now you're just running in that direction. Lovely. And two else is left. Not many people. You're dead. And maybe one, but Felix has almost got this actually. And Oh, hang on. Maybe two actually. Maybe just a little bit on the two side. Right, excuse me. You're just... Oh, you're just a hooligan. Okay, where's your other one? Where's your friend? You're more dangerous. And boom. And boom. You all dead at this point? I'm pretty sure you're all dead at this point. Lovely. Right, little marauder base over here. Nothing too bad. One vandal. And boom. Hello over there. Boom. Anybody else? One more. A... Okay. Whatever you are. A Sinus. Is that a name or... I really hope you're not an important named character. Because you're dead now. Maybe there was a bounty out on you or something. Okay, he does have a decent level 18 light machine gun. Parvati, I think we might want to give that to you. Oh yeah, she's using a level 16 right now, so... Hang on. 62. Why 62? If I swap that in, that's also 62. Hang on, that's light. Why are you holding that one like that, but that one like this? That's... Okay, light machine gun versus... Ah, light assault rifle. Sorry, different weapon type. Though honestly, DPS versus DPS. Stagger versus still stagger. Right, Parvati, have fun with... No, she doesn't look right with that, does she? No, I'm putting her back to the light thing, that's fine. But at least one building we can go inside here, so alright. Bit more looting, maybe some lore or something. Oh, a locked room, you say? I do like a locked room. Uh, right, locked room out in the middle of nowhere, and uh, one safe, wide open. Though, uh, honestly, that's... Bit on the disappointing side, though. Hang on. Hang the flip on. Armor ignored by stealth attacks 10%. That's... It's actually pretty decent. Okay, we might be on to something there. Okay, so there's not a designated crossing point here, but I can't help but notice. This here. This looks like this is not a particularly long jump. Like, you know, given I've got vats and I'm very good at jumping and diddly diddly d, That's not that unmanageable. In theory, we might be able to make this little short hop right here. 
and thus be almost at this town to get Parvati what she wants. Second catastrophically stupid attempt to jump. Go! And this was a mistake, Parvati! Okay, that's probably not actually jumpable, no. I need your help. I can pay. Oh, for goodness sake, I've just walked into town again just to basically go and visit Stella Bay. And straight away, another person's running up to me, going, Oh no, you look like the protagonist. Please help me. No one else can help me. Not like the police that are literally standing, right flipping there. No, only you, random nameless person. All right, Agnes Needham, what do you bloody want? Oh, thank you for stopping. Everyone acts like nothing's wrong. Like my little boy isn't at risk of being eaten by some vile creature. Please, you have to help me get my little Tucker back. He ran away and is going to get himself killed. Oh, I, I just know a Raptodon is melting him with acid as we speak. Right, okay, I'm guessing he just went to go and join one of the other factions then. He ran out into the wilderness a few days ago. I warned him about the Raptodons, Mantasaurs and Marauders, the toxic sulfur pools and poisonous plants, but he didn't listen. Oh, law, Captain. A youngster won't last long in a place like this. Please, can't we help? Please, won't you go and find my boy? I'll do it, but I want you to know it's only because Parvati wants to. Though first I need more information. Why would Tucker run away? He's been pining for an adventure. Says he's tired of living cooped up behind the walls. But he doesn't understand how dangerous it is out there. I warned him. A raptodon would snap him up first chance it got. I just know one's rip his arm off and is gnawing on his sweet little fingers. He should have listened to his mama. I promised I'd keep him safe here with me. Yeah, I feel like if he hadn't been quite so overprotective, he probably wouldn't have run off so much. But whatever. If he was going to go somewhere, where would he have gone? Like, is anywhere around here mentioned in an adventure serial or anything like that? He's been listening to those awful broadcasts that the Iconoclasts put out. I begged Sanjar to put a stop to them, but did he? No! And now I just know my boys run off to Amber Heights. That is, if a Manta Queen hasn't spooled out and eaten his entrails for breakfast already! I like how much thought you've put into the exact specific ways he might have died. That's lovely. So, uh, yeah, point me towards Amber Heights. That old settlement, southwest of Stellar Bay. I don't know which is worse, the thought of my son shacking up with the nutty iconoclasts. Or that he never made it. Sprats could be nesting in his rotting body alongside the road as we speak. Or, or maybe marauders got him, pulled all his teeth out, crushed him into their drugs and made him snort him. Oh, the things that could happen to my sweet baby. Someone had a lot of fun writing this woman's dialogue. And yeah, tell me more about the Iconoclast, because are they the same as the Philosophists? Because if so, I'm on their side. Those low-life degenerates, leading innocent boys into a life of danger. Oh, they make it sound so exciting. Like it's noble to risk it all out there, fighting for the greater good. Not sure I'm seeing the problem here. You're one of them, aren't you? You should be ashamed of yourself, young man. Just as your mama would be. How noble is it to worry your loved ones? Not at all, I say. But still they preach their sermons of anarchy and rebellion to anyone who'll listen. If they weren't holed up in Amber Heights, I'd knock them all upside the head. Right, I'm guessing philosophers then. Gotcha. Here we go. So Amber Heights might be maybe this whole wider area. I'm not sure because, yeah, the quest marker for the boy is over here. So I'm guessing maybe this here is Amber Heights. Fallbrook, however, seems to be more in this direction because, yeah, the quest for Max says go over here and that's supposed to take you to Fallbrook. So uh, that's a lot further off and I'm guessing uh, this spot around here, that's just abandoned houses because all this around here was just abandoned houses too. Still, very similar to what we've seen previously. Yeah, this town is basically just one block with a big building in the middle. So... Uh, Let's just go around, uh, see what we can find, and obviously scavenge anything that happens to be left around in any of the alleyways, assuming no one's going to see it. Hello there, Agnes. Right, we'll get back to you soon, all right? Okay, here we go. Starting at the landing pad up here, assuming I'd actually landed here, the Yacht Club is right ahead of you, so I believe uh, 
We were supposed to pick up our guide here. Yes! Nyoka. Hello there. So, we might be willing to get rid of Felix to bring Nyoka into the team, given uh, she's probably going to have a lot to say about this area. So, it'd be good to travel around with her, because, you know, she's going to know the people, so we'll get extra conversations, extra lore, diddly diddly d. Hello, Nyoka. And the little bastard's slippery, right? On account of its blood, so it's, it's sliding all over the place, trying to crawl away. Getting so I can't tell the, tell the blood from the mud. And okay, let's just see where this story goes. It appears she's very good at killing creatures, which is welcome on this planet. But I gotta get in there, get right in that baby rap stomach and dig it out. If so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion, I'd... Shit, I don't know what I'd do. Might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there. Right. What are you staring... Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? I'm actually, um, here to hire ya, if you'd be interested in joining up. Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? Oh, go on then, sure. That seems like a good way to get things off on the right foot. Outstanding! What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? As I say, looking to hire you, actually. Well, 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 well. Let's get down to Brass Nuts then, shall we? Brass... Wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's... Let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You'll have to get me something to clear my head. Alright, so, some form of drug to get her to sober up. Gotcha. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month, on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. I feel like I shouldn't be doing this, but yeah, caffeinoid, just a stimulant apparently. Well, they work. We got a deal or what? Okay, so we can't actually talk her out of, you know, using the drugs she shouldn't actually be using. Fair enough, I'll be right back. And if we just head straight down the road here, looks like we've actually got ourselves, there's the police station. This here is presumably going to be the doctor. So hello over there. Hello, dearie. Well, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? Okay, Abigail's freaking me out a little bit here. And also, who's Velma? Right, possibly she was having a conversation just before I came in. I was supposed to over here. Yes, what's a Velma? She works over at the fishery next door. Quite the hard worker, but she's got a bit of a temper. All right, so Velma Fishery. So you guys are in, yes, you guys are in the Soltuna trade as well. I'm sure I heard someone mention Soltuna. Why, just the other day, I heard her shouting from here. I can't imagine what set her off. Oh, but here I go again, running my mouth when it's none of my business. Was there something else you needed? Right, go and catch up with Velma. She'll have a subquest for me. And uh, yeah, Medical 35, I'd like some caffeinoids, please. And what a helpful young lady you are. Nothing like a little pill to liven up the spirits. Who's your lucky friend, dearie? Now, make sure we actually lie, because Nyoka's supposed to have been cut off. I'm so sorry, but with the iconoclasts and the marauder filth chasing away what little trade we get, I'm afraid I have to reserve my supply for Stellar Bay residents. Our reserves have gotten so low, I've even had to start locking the supply room upstairs. Isn't it a shame what some people will do to get a little extra? You just want me to rob that place, don't you? And that is just awful. And okay, if I say it's Nyoka, maybe a speech check will get you to say yes regardless. Oh, her. It's none of my business, but I have told her Dr. Williams would bump up her monthly allotment if only she'd join MSI. Contribute like the rest of us. 
Now I've gone and said too much. <laughs> and you know me, dearie. I don't like to pry. Oh, I think you enjoy prying. And uh, anything I could do to increase her allotment, because that'd get her on side. Well, I'm afraid not. Dr. Williams managed the town's allotments from his terminal upstairs. Even I can't access them. Okay, hack the computer, break into the office, or... Yeah, I thought you were in charge around here, Auntie. You sure ought to be. Oh, you flattering old woman. Me, I'm just here to be a pretty face for the customers. And to keep an extra key to the supply room for all the times Dr. Williams misplaced his. Okay, so yeah, supply room. Is that the locked room you just mentioned? The one upstairs, where we store our medicines. You really desperately want me to break into that room, don't you? Though yeah, Dr. Williams, where's he? In the town graveyard, I'm afraid. Poor man was always searching for the flower of enlightenment. On the way, he tried some rather daring substance combinations. Ah, into scientism and desperately after trying to figure out the great plan, I'm guessing. It's a philosophist symbol of some kind, dearie. Never you mind. The graveyard's near the southern ruins. You're certainly welcome to pay our respects, but the bodies tend to attract beasties. Are you gonna go tussle with some raptodons? Because I've been practicing my dropkick. Do be careful. I'd hate for anything to happen to you, dearie. Right, quite the opposite. Not actually into scientism at all, philosophist, and that doesn't seem to be a dirty word around here, despite the fact this is a company town, which is interesting. Then again, maybe that's part of why this town has been shut off by the company. Too many people thinking not right thoughts. So, we could go to the graveyard, diddly diddly dee, but I feel like we don't actually need to bother. Nope, I'm just gonna go upstairs. Don't mind me. Definitely not stealing all of the medicine. Right, steal all the medicine. And, oh, that's not even difficult to do. Yeah, there's no one around here. Right, so, crack that open. Grab all of this, and also grab literally everything else. Screw your stupid medicine supplies. And level 18 for grabbing the caffeinoid. Beautiful. And I'll be having all of her money and possessions too. Spot on. Now, 10 more points to spend here, and, uh, yeah... Interesting thing about Persuade, that's actually been boosted to uh, 76, and I could get it even higher if I was actually wearing uh, the hat right now. So, okay, hang on. I'm not in a fight at the minute, so put on the hat. 80 flipping 3, because apparently Felix and Parvati are passing me a huge amount of speech benefits. Okay, because both of them actually do have decent Persuade themselves, that's why they're passing on some benefits. Though actually, yeah, we'll make some changes here. Parvati, you're actually, yeah, a little bit more on the flimsy side, so you stay at far range and uh, stick to your ranged weapon as far as possible. So on that basis, if I wanted one of my dialogue skills to be ridiculous, I should really just take Persuade up a little bit further. So uh, let's get that up towards, uh, yeah, Coward Humans uh, Reduced Armor. Let's get that up to 60 right now and 93 total because this is an Obsidian game. So by the time we reach the end of the game, I'm going to be wanting one of my skills to be at 100. And I'm feeling like Persuade is the right one. Then again, that might be a bit excessive for the time being. 83 is fine for now, especially when I could actually get this up to 80 right this second. And there we go. Sneak attack weak spot damage plus 20%. Now that's good stuff. And accordingly, my lockpick could actually be massively boosted too, because both Parvati and Felix are helping out with that business. So, uh, go on. We'll get that up to an adjusted 80. So yeah, it's not 80 for the sake of passive perks, but it is 80 for the sake of actually, you know, unlocking doors. So, uh, that seems like a good thing to me. And as for perks, oh, here we go. The tier 3 stuff. This is where things start getting sexy. So, confidence... After killing an enemy, guarantee critical. Nice. Double skill bonuses from any armor. Oh no, that's actually pretty bloody huge. That is massive. Because yeah, right at this exact moment in time, that hat would go up from plus 7 to plus 14 across every single skill. These goggles would be worth plus 30 to engineering. That'd be only plus 10 to defense skills. Yeah, we might swap that out at some point for something better. But this mask... 
would be, yeah, minus 20% armor for sneak attacks, doubling that benefit. That's plus 10 right there. That's plus 10 to engineering too. In fact, you know what? As we've now got this, and actually it's a much lighter, we should just, yeah, get rid of this old thing. Yeah, we can break that down. That's 100% fine. That's just tech skills plus 5. That's engineering plus 5. Okay, we'll keep it for now, I guess. Anyway, armor master is really damn good. Tactical Master, when you activate Tactical Time Dilation, you continue to move at normal speed for a short time, so 5 seconds, which is 70% up from normal, so uh, fine, but then moving during Tactical Time Dilation isn't really the priority for me, it's lining up the shots, so uh, maybe, maybe not. And if hit by a harmful combat effect, 20% bonus damage. Not terrible, not terrible at all. Reduced detection radius if you're on your own. Very nice if you're not using companions. 15% uh, melee damage returned as health. Ooh, that's really, really nice if you're melee, but not for me, obviously. Thick skin. So, uh, plasma damage received down. Air of effect damage received down. I can do without that, to be honest. Penetrating shot. So, range attacks inflict minus one armor rating for 10 seconds, uh, stacking up to minus 10. Good if you were using automatics. Not so much for me, but then again, hang on. Does a shotgun count for, like, however many shots it is? Because, uh, presumably, it should. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Revive companions with the inhaler, but with a massive cooldown. So, maybe don't bother with that business. Headshots deal 25% of their damage to enemies that are standing close by. Potentially useful, but not 100% sure about that. And, yeah, emergency last-minute health. Ooh, that's some really nice stuff right there. But I'm taking Armor Master because, yeah, that double skill bonus is actually slightly ludicrous. That's really good. With the right bit of armor, that could be incredible. In fact, that's immediately boosted gem. I persuade to 90, lie to 57, intimidate to 57. Because I'm getting 14 off Reed's hat. Now that, that's big. And I did have some armor at some point that gave me... Yeah, it was plus 7 to long guns. So that would actually be boosted to plus 14 for long guns. Which would be uh, a huge amount of extra damage. So... Uh, yeah, that's good stuff right there. And um, while we're standing here, by the way, yeah, let's actually just increase her caffeinoid allotment because she seems to enjoy it. So, oh, maybe we don't do that, actually. Maybe we just give this to her as a one-off because, uh, yeah, prolonged alcoholism, uh, liver damage, social withdrawal. Uh, maybe we don't actually give her more. That seems like a bad thing. Also worthy of note inside this computer... A. Edwards, the nurse downstairs, uh, has been working on a novel, work in progress 3, 146,000 words, which is uh, pretty long, pretty long for a novel, about a battle-hardened young Earth Directorate soldier and his steamy romance with an elegant older nurse, which is just marvellous. Right, back to the club, you can have yourself... Oh, hang on. I was about to give her a one thing, but there's a named person here. Hello, Bennett. Laws. Can a man enjoy the smooth menthol flavor of a stogie slim in peace? Okay, maybe you don't actually want to talk, but hello, who are you? Why do you have a name? What I am doing, ma'am, is enjoying the moment. It's so rare that I can seize one apart from the jabbering masses of this wretched place. Okay, you seem to be a bit of a dick, so I'm guessing no one's missing your company either. And how should they know what they're missing? I recall when Stellar Bay was a proper board-affiliated town with regular shipments of Auntie Cleo's Best and all the cereals. Before Sanjar took over MSI and got us all booted. Aha! So this guy's a bit of a loyalist who remembers the good old days before this place got itself blockaded, and they're blaming the head of the town as Sanjar. Gotcha. So yeah, tell me about the good old days as you remember them. Days of consumption and culture when we weren't squabbling with the iconoclasts for lack of better things to do. Look, you're making me melancholy. Is there something you wanted? No, no, you just gave me a bit of lore. Thanks for that. Right, Neoka, welcome aboard. Here you go, magic pills. But, um, you are aware your liver's failing, right? More or less dangerous than a steady supply of alcohol. Give it in. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh... Oh. There it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. So, you're a guide, and I'm guessing that means at some point there'll be like a locked door where they won't let me through unless you're with the team. So, uh, here we go. Glad to have you on board. We'll travel with you for at least a little bit. Great. Where to? 
And we will be going to the information broker, though. I just gained a thousand bets. Is she paying me to join the team? I don't know who just gave me that money, but fine. Yes, information broker. Um, Biram, I think his name was. Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. Okay, so if you're a big hunter, I'm guessing you're going to be decent on the front line. So, uh, Felix, wait on the ship for the time being. Nyoka can join me for the minute, because this is her town. She'll be able to fill me in on what's going on. I hope you like being part of our crew, Nyoka. We're real excited to have you. Oh, Parvati, you're such a flipping treasure. Oh my, so Nyoka starts off with a giant gun that also apparently does some Bernie damage, highly effective against creatures. That's pretty damn solid uh, right there. And uh, some form of giant cleaving axe. Love it. So uh, go on then. We'll leave you with that for the time being because that's much better than anything else I could give you. Meanwhile, your starting armor is uh, 22. Reasonable if unspectacular. And yeah, next time we run into a decent helmet, we'll get you one. But for now, just take the hibernation helmet. It's not great, but it'll do. She also gets stealth skills plus five. Yeah, level 18, 22 is not great. We need to get her something better than that. Now, let's see what she's actually good at. So, uh, she could boost my lie skills. That's not terrible. Lying is not bad at all. I want her to be the frontliner. So, yeah, she is going to be generating threat. That is good. Opens up tier two right there. Other than that, yeah, typical armor, range damage, melee damage, or... Reduction of radius of footsteps. Okay, so she's a very good part of a sneaky team. For the time being though, yeah, just increase your damage because you're a heavy damage dealer already. So that would be good stuff. And then over on the third rank, we've got ourselves, uh, yeah, standard stuff there in terms of ability cooldown. Companion ability damage up. Alternatively, standard equip and reload speed. What's the special one? Bonus damage to creatures. Not spectacular because creatures don't seem like the most dangerous things in the world. But then again... I haven't run into the creatures on this planet yet, so uh, give it a bit of time. Uh, maybe, just maybe. Let's just actually just apply those for the minute. What is your special ability? Basically like a grenade thing. So does damage, but also sets enemies nearby ablaze. So reduces their armor, deals damage over time. Very good thing to do against a major target. Got it. We'll go on then. That does sound fun. We'll power that up a bit too. What was it like in Edgewater? I hear you workers were on the clock every available moment. We always got eight hours a day for sleeping. Just not always consecutive. My condolences. I appreciate consistent wages like any other sane person, but that still sounds awful. At least Sanjar gives his folks weekends. Weekends? Hand to the void. I used to drop by the bar in Stellar Bay to knock a few back with the folks who had Saturdays off. Don't know what I'd have done with that much time. I was always behind schedule anyhow. Knowing you, you'd sit and be alone with your thoughts. Okay, Parvati, one, this is why we abolished Edgewater. Okay, because it was a nightmare town. And two, we're learning more about why Sanjar's been cut off from the rest of the galaxy. Not just the philosophist and the iconoclast business, but yeah, he's actually treating people well. And if you're the board, you probably don't want anyone else to know about how people are being treated well. Because, uh, you know, ideas about weekends off might start to spread. I think we're getting to the root of the issue here. And someone else named upstairs, Caleb Herrick. So, uh, yep, Captain of the Unreliable. But let's stick with Hawthorne for now. A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair, sit a spell and revel with us? By the smell, he's been reveling enough for you both already. Okay, so yeah. Tell me more about MSI in the local town, please. I'll gladly drink with you if you tell me about this MSI thing. Me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered, free of responsibility and worldly cares. Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. 
See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. Oh, yeah. That's definitely why this place has actually been cut down. Sanjar, workers' rights striking. Don't want that spreading around. I would see why the board would want to shut this down immediately, though. I suspect this place is going to be wiped out by robots sooner rather than later, if that's how it's going. So, uh, yeah, what was the big factor that made you do that? It ain't any one thing but the sum of it all, having to work longer shifts for less bits. And the wages we do earn don't cover as much as they used to. Our supervisor, Velma, goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch, we're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. Alright, so you gotta say, what he's asking for does not sound unreasonable. He just wants to be paid as much as he used to, and the pay he gets to cover what it used to cost. He's not even wanting a pay rise, he just doesn't want a pay cut in real terms. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty good at negotiating, especially when I'm wearing a hat, I took off the last idiot who decided he didn't want to negotiate with me. So, uh, yeah, I could go and handle this for you. I wouldn't doubt it. You look like the type who tends to come out on top. Not like us cogs. Trying to be the squeaky wheel, but just getting deadlocked. It's been days, but Velma won't even hear us out. Maybe you could just make her listen to our demands. All right, I'm up for that. Let's flip and do it. So, I could just lie to him and say Sanjar's gonna fire Velma if you don't get back to work, and despite the fact, yeah, you're not keen on her right now, she is not a terrible ally for you, so apparently that'll be bad, so let's not do that. But, yeah, how would I put pressure on her? Tell me what you know. If I knew that, I'd have tried it. Talking reasonably got me nowhere. Maybe you'll fare better. The others wanted to blackmail her, but we're above that. Besides, them are just rumors. We got no proof they're true. Oh, go on. Tell me the flippin' dirt. I might be able to find some proof. I would never endorse such an untoward tactic, you know, but, well, there's rumors that Velma's taking a cut off the profits. So far, it's just gossip, you know, but if there was any proof to be had, it'd be in the Saltuna warehouse, I reckon. All right, into the warehouse. Good stuff. By the way, if you hear that little ba-boom noise, that's basically just your mission log updating with relevant information. It's a really nice thing this game does. Because rather than just telling you what your current objective is, the game actually includes any relevant information you've already come across that you might want to revisit or might be useful going forward. So on this occasion, that Velma might have been skimming money off the top. Alright, let's stay on that as we've just started it right here. So, uh, yeah, there was the medical place over here and they did just say right next door was the cannery. So, uh, this looks like a cannery and that looks like a Velma. Right, so this here is one of your core businesses. So Tuna once again. Now, I should flag before I step in. I have a bit of a bad reputation with Soul Tuna facilities. Sometimes I lead them to, you know, go out of business and die. Hopefully that hasn't reached you guys yet. And you, uh, you don't have a name. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to pull a gun on you. Right, let's just explore around here. Find some vending machines. And yeah, ideally, find some better armor for Nyoka. She could definitely do with some better armor, but this stuff seems to be, yeah, mostly low-level stuff, to be honest. Then again, 25 for level 14 actually isn't terrible at all. I mean, I'm swimming in money right now, so... You know what? I might just take that and give it a go, because... Uh, that is not bad. That is really not bad. And uh, range weapons plus 5, uh, boosted up to plus 10. Only costs 500. I'm going to take one of them. Let's see how that goes. And you know what? If it is good, I might... I might come back for another one. But for the time being, where's the nearest workbench? But then again, I was just actually looking around for the workbench. I found another vending machine. We've also got ourselves... Yeah, level 18, 32. That's not bad either. And comes with determination. Now, that's health for my companions. And I do want my companions to stay alive for longer. You know what? I'm going to buy that too. We're going to try those side by side, see what we like. And as for Nyoka, we've got some fairly cheap just power armor here. So, oh, but then again, it wouldn't match. I need it to match. If you got some matching power armor, that's the, no, that's the light armor. We need something that matches. I mean, that's going to look horrible alongside Parvati, except maybe it'll be complimentary. 
Okay, we'll get that too. Sure, why not? Still haven't found a bloody work table, by the way. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to call the ship up. Okay, so the determination armor is 32 at level 18 base. This, meanwhile, is... Yeah, if we get that up to uh, level 18, which is cheap to do, so we'll just do that. That's level 18, also 32. So the question is, do I want to have uh, plus 5 boosted to plus 10 on the range skills, uh, or plus 7 boosted to plus 14 on determination? And, uh, okay, we're going to decide this based on how they look. So we got the grey armor there. Bit on the boring side, to be honest, or the blue armor here. Oh, that's... that's kind of ugly. I mean, that's... that's really ugly. That's so damn ugly. Oh, that's such a shame that it's as ugly as anything, but it's just that padding. It's just the awful, awful padding. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to store that, because I might give it to a different companion. In fact, you know what? No, no, no. What we're going to do is... I'm going to put this on. That's absolutely fine. This is going to go with it. And oh my, that's... That's pretty badass. Okay, as a combo, that works pretty well. Yes. Now, the heavy armor is nice and easy to modify. So we're just going to whack that up a little bit now. Get that up towards... Uh, yeah, 50-odd. Uh, so go on then. Get up to level 20. And then modify it to just be a little bit better. Because I must be just swimming in mods right now. This is going over to Neoka. There we go, an extra 5 physical armor rating, we got 3 of them, get that installed, straight over to, yeah, shield if you're low on health, keeps you alive, lovely, next up, 1, fuck it, tech skills, ranged weapon skills, get them up by 5 please, and then finally, what do we want here, ooh, carry capacity. I don't know if that actually makes any impact on me, because my companions just pass their capacity on to me, so does high capacity for them. You know what, screw it, I've got four of them, we'll put it on. So she now goes over to this. Okay, it doesn't look anywhere near as bad in the power armor variant, because yeah, it doesn't have the awful, awful leg bits. It's much better than it was. Though I will need a new plasma launcher or another heavy weapon sooner or later, because uh, yeah, 2,000 bits to get this up to level 22. So, uh, shotgun's nice and cheap to do. That's just lovely. But everything else is uh, getting pricey. Hunting rifle's okay for now. Just the damage is already spectacular. That's absolutely fine. But, yeah. We need to find some new replacements sooner rather than later. Still, the armor, that was base level 18. So that, that is super cheap to make better. 36, 39, 41, 44. And that's as high as that can get. This thing, however, yeah, now this. This I'm happy with. So, work on that, work on that, work on that. we got plenty of money for the time being. Level 22. That is now up to 33. And 23, sorry, not 22. So, yeah, that's now 33, 44. Not spectacular, but it'll do. And now just to slap some extra bits and pieces on the new armor. Because, yeah, I think we'll be using this for... A little bit of time at least. So, uh, yeah, we got plenty of toughen. Make it a bit more resistant. Put one of those, uh, yeah, kinematics on it. In fact, yeah, we barely used that last set of arm, which is a bit of a shame, but no matter. I will take Hunter for range skills up, and then I will take, ooh, Nightingale, Backpack, or Geographic. Yeah, I'll take Nightingale again. Nightingale's pretty good. Right, so, pretty happy with that. Time to slap all that on. Oh, now that is pretty nice, though. That is pretty nice stuff. And that there is a huge boost of determination from 24 up to 38. Love it. Though then again, hang on. Am I getting any benefit from that or... Ooh. I'm not sure. So yeah, right now 375 up. Because is the boost just for skill checks and determination doesn't have... Ooh, I don't know. No, I'm definitely getting the benefit. Because at 24, it's only 233. The only thing you can't have access to through boosting is the base skill unlocks. Okay, now that's better. Much better. And uh, you clash a little bit, but it'll do for now. Right, as I was saying, yes, Velma, Soul Tuna Cannery, time to ruin someone else's livelihood. Oh, and here's fun. Out the back of the Soul Tuna Cannery, we've actually got ourselves some, like, docks. Which would imply that your Soul Tuna might actually contain, like, you know, Soul Tuna, which is pretty bloody exciting. Together with, ooh, Stella Bay Ruin South. Okay. There's some secret underground ruins here. We'll go and have a little Luxy there momentarily. Also, there's a corpse holding a bloody note. So arguably that's more important than like, you know, a hole in the ground. But whatever. 
Most of the text on this note is obscured by blood. You can make out the words Lilia and a passcode. Ah! I'm guessing you're the person Lilia sent me to find, but it's all gone a bit on the wrong side, right? Yes, yes it is. So now I need to go and meet with Catherine with that passcode. And, uh, okay, where's that? Okay, Fallbrook, same place Max wants me to go, way down over here. Well, we'll get to that in time. For the time being, yeah, I'm more interested in just chilling out here and learning more about Stella Bay itself. So, uh, we might head back out into the world later. Also, am I allowed to just fall into the water? Nope, tragically invisible walls all the way. But it is nice to know there's actual water here. And, you know, signs of boats and whatever. Implying the Soul Tuna does actually contain Soul Tuna. Especially if... Oh, hang on. Is that by any chance, like, a massive vertical fish farm? Because if it is, that's the coolest thing. Yep, inside, that is actual Soul Tuna right there. We have actual fish confirmed. So these guys, these guys are much more likely to be sustainable because they're actually selling what they say they're selling. Now, before we actually go any further, yeah... Let's just very quickly check this woman's office for anything that might be of interest. Well, we do have a toss ball poster signed by the black hole. I swear someone wanted me to get that. Does anyone remember who wanted me to get that? Someone did. Aha. I'm guessing I've just bypassed Celia here. Yeah. So Velma just straight up stole the poster for herself. Dear oh flipping dear. Assuming this is Velma's terminal, I don't actually know. And yes, indeed, we do have tanks of fish, so I'm guessing what I saw out back was a vertical fish farm, which is really, really lovely. And Velma, for her faults, is actually paying attention to the fish being not so great. She actually cares about quality. Okay, I'm liking this place better. Ah, but one small problem. Now the board's put them on lockdown, they don't have buyers for the sole tuna. Gotcha. Gonna need hack 55 for a bypass. Pretty sure we can do that. Just give me a second here. There we go, job done. Do not mash random keys, terrible idea. Hack 55 and... I've got hack 55, what are you talking about? For the last time, John, stealth, not tech. Now you can see how I get confused that hack isn't a tech skill, it really feels like it should be. Right, we'll come back to that one later, because yeah, right now I'm not sure I can actually boost that by 5, I've not got the right stuff on me, so... Uh, okay, in which case, no, don't, don't get out the giant death cannon, that's not what we're doing. We're just going to go and have a chat with Velma about what's going on. And before we do, make sure I'm wearing the nice hat. Good. Hello there, Velma. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Aha, uh -huh. the same Catherine I need to go and speak to. Gotcha. So, uh, yeah, tell me more about the relationship between here and uh, Fallbrook. Because I'm guessing you're relying on those guys to keep you going at the minutes. Sorry. Seems I got my cables crossed. Thought you were another shakedown tough from Fallbrook. Hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. Aha. The guy who checks if the fish are healthy. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. Okay, so, yeah. Any chance you want me to actually find him or something? And even though you're a free colony, you've still got, like, working hours, presumably. We're not keen on rules for rules sake around here. Means Braxton skips work sometimes, but it also means no company boss is telling me when I can take a shit. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? By any chances, Braxton that corpse. Braxton might be that corpse. So, uh, yeah, Catherine, tell me more, because I'm about to go meet her soon. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Stellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground zig spacer. Alright, nothing too major there, just a vague description, nothing I could use going forward. And yeah, Braxton stealing drugs, like presumably the drugs you feed to the fish. Which sounds like a terrible idea. Stealing's such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. 
And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we used for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton shifts. Okay, so, uh, yeah, very nice of you to not actually turn him in there. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the Saltuna, fat and mostly tumor-free. You know what? I like this place. Braxton is good at his job, so therefore people look the other way if sometimes he's late for work, sometimes he takes a day off. This is good. This is positive. I like this place. We're going to see if we can help them out a bit, but how do we resolve the Caleb situation? Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. And yeah, here we go. He's saying prices are going up, so if you don't pay him more, he's actually taking a real terms pay cut. Tell him to complain to Catherine in Fallbrook. Not me. Sublight's demanding more money for the same contracts, which means we're all in the same boat. Okay, so if you could, would you pay him more? Hard workers? They turn dials and flip switches. The machines do all the actual work. I'll wager she don't pay those folks that maintain the mechanicals decent neither. Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else around here, I'll tell you that much. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. Okay, so, a bit of a problem, and, uh, ooh, persuade of 100. If you hire sublight, you'll just give him more control over your business. Okay, so, uh, with a lie of 30, I know you're taking a percentage off the top. I'm guessing I would have been able to find that in her computer, but I don't actually have the evidence. So, uh, we'll see. We'll see how she reacts to this. Same thing as me. Where's your proof? Because I know no one's been poking around my terminal lately. I'm in the wrong business if a woman this dense can get away with robbing her company. Just as a... hypothetical. Nothing to see on my terminal, of course. Because I've done nothing wrong. All right, so we need to get into the terminal. We can't actually blag her on this one. Look, can we maybe get you to meet Caleb halfway? Maybe don't give him everything he wants, but give him a bit, enough that I can take it back to him, get him back to work. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. All right, so she's not willing to compromise, but... Okay, I'll be right flipping back. Here we go, nip back to the ship to grab Nyoka's starting gear, because that comes with stealth plus five, which should be just about enough to get into the computer. Beautiful. Here we go, so she is stealing, but very small amounts, so no one would ever notice. Beautiful. Velma, 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 what are we going to do with you? Here we go, you've been skimming off money, and if there's money to be skimmed off, there's money to pay your workers more. Yeah, and did you miss the part where I'm working doubles to cover for everyone who decides not to show? I'm the one who keeps this place running. That money's mine, one way or another. No, no, no. Unacceptable. <sighs> Fine. Tell Caleb he and his team can have their raise, but I need them back here immediately. Something else on your mind? Okay, job is done. She gets her workers back. They get paid more, she stops stealing, pretty much everybody's happy with that state of affairs. And here we go, I don't need to tell him the details, but you guys have got yourselves a pay rise. How'd you manage that? Wait, never mind. If I question it, it'll turn out not to be true. Besides, I never follow how you got Velma to part ways with a bit card of her own accord. As agreed, here's your compensation. Ain't a lot, but I hope it shows how much we appreciate all you've done. Now me and my friends here better get back to work before Velma blows a fuse. You know what? I think right there, we have done some good work. We've managed to actually, yeah, get the workers a pay rise, but not in a way that's going to make the business more unsustainable because the money is coming from her thieving. Ah, yes, and don't forget, poster being passed over to Grimm. Here you go. It was flipping stolen, but I got it for you. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright, and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was going to spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker, too. Never get the chance to use it these days. 
All right, level flipping 19, giant pile of XP, and potentially a unique melee weapon. Level 18, 140. Right, so we're going to be breaking that down for parts. Okay, so, 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 lock picking. I'm interested in lock picking right now because uh, we can get that up to uh, 60. Can see what's inside lock containers. Not bad at all, but more importantly, if I take this together with plus five stealth armor, together with getting Felix back on board, I think we might be able to break into that very securely locked door in Cascadia. Ooh, I just arrived and Nyoka wants to talk. Hello, Nyoka. Do you like have a mission for me or something? Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and I could use the help. Oh, go on then, sure. We can go and visit him. Who is he? I used to run with a band of hunters. Friends. Six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out, and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years, and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. Okay, that's a bit of a sad mission, but we'll be getting on with that. Sure, we can do that. First, we go to Hayes. I buried him away from our encampment. I need to pay my respects. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to bury. Aha, she mentioned a medallion when she was drunk when we first met her, so uh, I'm guessing all six of them have some form of matching medallion or something. And yeah... Where's home? A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. Then, we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. Alright, sounds like a fun mission. We'll get on with that, just not quite this second. Alright, back here, but with these two, because both of them are passing on lockpicking, so with that together... Oh yeah, 90. 90 right there. So whatever's behind here better be good. Alright, this took some getting to. Flipping 90 and... Uh, okay. One basic nightingale step. Bit of basic ammo here. Right, you Mr. Safe better have... Uh, that's terrible. That's terrible. That's a tiny, tiny amount of money. Okay, we'll pick it because we can. And... Uh, okay, is that... Is that literally it? This was 90 hack to get in here. I was expecting secret flipping tunnels. Now, back to the apartment because I suspect... Yeah, Braxton is going to be the same guy who just ended up a little bit on the, the dead side. Or maybe, hang on, maybe he's... Maybe he's one up. Maybe Braxton's fine. I was worried there for a second. Let's just go one apartment up here. And uh, hello, are you a Braxton? <gasps> You startled me. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Okay, who are you? Because this is Braxton's apartment. Braxton? I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Okay, she's acting really, really suspicious here, alright? We just want to chill out, and you've probably been taking drugs, but no. Let's persuade her. Oh, in that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand so maybe look for him there aha he's not stealing drugs for his own use he's stealing drugs for the other communities around here right i like braxton good guy still while i'm in the building yeah the apartment apparently i'm not done searching this place yet and no one's bothered cleaning up apparently no one could be bothered with any of that business so uh, we already have yeah a few bits and pieces here Bunch of potential evidence. Who flippin' knows? Uh, right, search everything. There's something else here yet. Aha. Something on the table. A betting slip with increasingly bold wages uh, made for a team called uh, Mostly Colonists. It's from left field toss ball betting. Okay. Potentially some form of gambling issues here. And apparently that's on the far side of town over here, close by to... Uh, what's her face? The Doctor. Who was writing, here we go, left field toss ball betting. In fact, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff back here. 
Including a police station that literally doesn't open, but okay. Fine. And a science lab with nobody in it. Okay. Suspicious. Come back here later. Hello there, Mr. Betting Shop. Now, one of your clients has mysteriously ended up murdered, and I want flipping information. Ooh, you're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial Age Mammoths. Okay, I should definitely have brought along Felix. Felix knows his tossball, and... Actually, I play for Auntie Cleo's darlings. I'd heard they'd gotten a new hacker. Is that why everyone's making such a fuss about you? But what are you doing on Monarch? Why I'm scouting for new talent and also a goodwill tour of some description. <laughs> Maybe we're not so isolated as I thought. So, what can I do for you? Here we go. Betting slip, dead man's apartment. Because on top of doing the goodwill tour... I'm also an amateur detective. Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. Okay, so, uh, what's going on here? Just let me know what you know. Right, so the thing with Isaac is he didn't know where to stop. He'd get stuck on something, and he just couldn't let it go. Sometimes he'd drink Purpleberry Punch by the leader... Other times, he'd keep betting on a losing team. Started owing the wrong people money. Yeah, as I suspected, betting debt gone wrong. So who did he owe? I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club, they're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Alright, that sounds like a good tip right there. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. Alright, so that might be another way of getting some local reputation up here. Here we go, so here's the yacht club. And how do we get to the alley behind it precisely? Here we go, this area I came into right at the beginning. Hello there, guys. Let's talk this out all peaceful-like. Hey, what are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Okay, I don't like you guys, so... Yeah, well, I don't really know you murdered Isaac, but I'm gonna say I do. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business. So, Intimidate 55, we might just be able to get him to spill the beans right away because he's scared of me. Oh yeah? What are you saying exactly? And Intimidate 35, you've bullied people long enough. If you know what's good for you, clear out, never come back. Wow, most of the pencil pushers around here cave as soon as you look at them funny. Fine, we're going. This ain't worth it. I mean, honestly, we don't actually know they did it. We don't have any proof or anything. He's not wrong. And we're also just letting him walk away right now. But all right, fine. Apparently that's good enough. He's not coming back. That's going to make Sanjar happy regardless. Well, apparently that's good enough that Sanjar will want to hear it. And yeah, I'm liking Sanjar and I imagine he likes me. Okay, neutral for the minute, but there's still 20% positive, so uh, for the most part, Monarch should be pretty happy with me. And actually, that description does back up what I was saying earlier. Yeah, the reason they're blockaded is because Sanjar's actively trying to bring more worker rights and freedoms to the rest of Halcyon, which of course nobody else wants him to do. Gotcha. Please don't get the gun out. Please just stop getting the gun out. Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Ah, I get the feeling Celia's taking advantage of him, and probably was the one who stole the poster. Right, I don't like you, but let's speak to Sanjar. Well, new business turns up at last. 
Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. All right, so I like this guy. I bet he's got an Excel spreadsheet back in his office too. And yep, that's very generous of you. Celia, will you make a note of that for my self-review? Very generous. Noted. But not so generous I can't drive a good bargain. Now, who sent you? Rizzo's, perhaps? Or Auntie Cleo herself? Independent, in fact. So, uh, looking for an information broker, or... Yep, just charting my own path, just going wherever I can go. What a charming notion. One doesn't meet many free spirits in Alcyon. Not outside Tartarus prison, anyway. Forgive me, I'd be positively enraptured. Only, I take it this means you aren't here for Saltuna. Well, in theory... I could actually be here for both. I could do you a deal, shipping out the Soltunita somewhere. I've got a cargo ship sitting right over there. Very happy to just carry some off-world for you if that's what you want. But, uh, yeah, I could do both. Now, now, there's no need to humor me. I'm used to this particular letdown. Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and... Athletic disappointments. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Oh, Sanjar, I like you and I'm very sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, why would you want to bring them back? If you bring them back, then uh, you'll be back under their heel. What are you hoping to accomplish? Yeah, why do you actually want them back? Surviving alone isn't as easy as it looks. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. So-called is right. We've got our hazards, but we're still here, damn it. The board took off without so much as a thought for the folks left behind. I don't... Dang it, Captain, that's not right. Folks on Monarch shouldn't have to suffer just because the board says so. Now, we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious. Okay, what if I did a deal between you and the Groundbreaker? Because I feel like there could be a good little relationship here. That could be very, very nice indeed. And yeah, you're free. Embrace it. I can be a go-between. I've got friends on that ship. You talk like Graham. Freedom always sounds nice, doesn't it? It makes a rather pretty slogan. But if you sit down and tally up the costs, how you provide for yourself in the absence of aid, how you protect yourself from a hostile galaxy, it starts to lose its shine. Oh no, 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 no. I'm not letting you give up, Sanjar. I love you. We're going to save your damn freedom, all right? Well... Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. But will that help the people here, Mr. Sanjar? Keep them fed and safe? That's precisely what I'm trying to do. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. Okay, let's get to it here. What's the plan, folks? It's a two-pronged approach. The first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Can't deny some of the wildlife bit on the aggressive side. How are you going to do that, then? With a Bolt 52 cartridge, of course. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. I'm moderately confident I'm actually holding one of these. I don't remember where it came from. I just remember I've got one. Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. 
I'm so sorry. I was just using it to prop up the short leg on a desk. I didn't even know what it was. Bureaucratic micromanagement is the only way anything gets done in Halcyon, and proper documentation is a key part of that. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Aha! Uh -huh. So this is just bureaucracy. I've brought you a giant form. Fascinating. So, yes, the board will get their comeuppance. Huzzah! Sort of. Really, we're just going to blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea, it's definitely a firm middle finger. And okay, so what's next on the plan? And is it something I just happen to be holding again? Because if so, that'd be great. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch. Illegally and in secret. Is it really illegal if the board's the one that makes the rules in the first place? If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. Okay. More details, please, Sanjar. I'm not following what you want to do here. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. Oh, she most definitely can. I am wearing a fabulous hat right now. Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. Alright, so infiltrate secret corporate base, kidnap staff. Absolutely 100%. Ah, uh, yes, Isaac Rose dead, but I have found and driven out the people who killed him. But that's terrible. What happened? Uh, gambling debt, diddly diddly dee, they're gone now. I'm glad to hear you've dealt with them. They've been causing quite a bit of trouble around town. I've been consumed with other matters of late, but I would have dealt with them. Eventually. Okay, me and Sanjar, getting on well. Me and him, could be friends. And yeah, here we go. What's your take on why MSI got kicked off the board in the first place? I've asked myself the same thing many times. Especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. That ain't fair. They didn't leave on account of the hazards. They left on account of their cowardice. The hazards just gave them a reason to put to paper. Sharp as ever, Nyoka. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Okay, so you're just the guys who chose not to pull out when everyone else did. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. So yeah, you're the guy who decided to stay and improve things. I like you. I like you a lot. I am going to basically give you the galaxy if I can. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. I hope you'd treat them nice whether it was good business or not, Mr. Sanjar. That's what being a community means. Treating people right because it's the right thing to do. Hear, hear. That may not be the way the colony works, but it damn well ought to. Mm -hmm. A noble thought, Miss Holcomb. Unfortunately, noble thoughts rarely sway board policy. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. And I'm guessing that's when they immediately decided to screw you over. No. They laughed in our faces, and insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2, along with everyone else. And yet you're still here. Yes, some of us stayed behind, and as the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms, as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. Okay, so what we really need to do is basically just make them legitimate. 
And once word starts getting out and once trade starts flowing again, some of these ideas might start to spread. Beautiful. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Okay, I just wanted to chat with Celia about her working conditions. She started spewing to me about how she's in love with her drug dealer or something. Fine, we'll sort that out. We'll get you a date. Chill out. I'll do it. Alternatively, maybe don't date your drug dealer. That's probably a bad idea. Alright, and with that, I think we're pretty much done with Stella Bay itself as a town. Yeah, pretty much everything's pulling me south at this point. So... We're done with the town for the time being. Next time, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to head out into the world and explore the rest of Monarch because uh, there's a lot of flippin' stuff out there. We've got Fallbrook, we've got Amber Heights, we've got whatever all of this is down here. And of course, yeah, we need to get ourselves a dessert for Parvati's date, the most important thing of all. So we will crack on with that very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been The Outer Worlds. Thank you very much. And goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got a... I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake, I've made a mistake! This is gonna take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out- DIE YOU MOVING BASTARDS! DIE! DIE! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.